My name is Dawn Sanchez. I'm a public information officer for the Junkins Fire. Uh, we're going to give you a rundown of the fire with just the basic facts, and then we're going to have Sheriff Shannon Byerly from the Custer County Sheriff's Office speak, Sheriff Kirk Taylor from the Pueblo County Sheriff's Office speak, and then Forest Supervisor Aaron Connolly from the San Isabel National Forest. So as of 5 p.m. today, uh, wildfire started at approximately 3.40 a.m. in Junkins Park, east of West Cliff, Colorado. There's approximately 156 properties in mandatory evacuations, 140 properties in pre-evacuation, and approximately 3,000 people on pre-evacuation. Fires estimated at 11,500 acres and 0% contained. The cause at this time is unknown. The fire is burning in mixed conifer, aspen, and grass. And then as far as jurisdiction, we're covering a pretty large area. We have Custer County, Pueblo County, U.S. Forest Service, and the BLM. The agencies that we do have on scene cooperating, Custer County, Pueblo County, U.S. Forest Service, BLM, and the state of Colorado. We also have Fremont County helping from the Sheriff's Office. Uh, right now, our priority is firefighter safety and the public. Uh, right now, we're working on getting people evacuated, and we're working on uh, protecting homes at this time. As far as resources committed, we have 80 personnel on scene, and we have two single-engine air tankers. We just got word that we have two heavy air tankers en route to the fire at this time. We have lots of resources that have been ordered. We have a Type 1 management team that's on order and they'll take over the fire at 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. We have nine additional engines ordered. We have six hotshot crews on order, 11 additional hand crews, one additional helicopter, and one dozer. We'll go through the evacuations that we have. For Pueblo County, we have North Creek Road from County Line to Central, Simonson Trail, and those are for the evacuations, the mandatories. For pre-evacuation notice for Pueblo County, we have Red Creek Ranch, which are the areas of Savage Road, Road and Vaughn. And we also have Beulah Valley on pre-evacuation. In Custer County, we have County Roads 358, 385, 387, and 389. We also have the Eagle Springs Ranch subdivision, Highway 165 from McKenzie Junction, which is mile marker 1, to Ophir Creek, which is approximately mile marker 11. This also includes campground and hunting camps in those areas. Highway 96 from mile marker 20 to 23, Wetmore, Greenwood Road, and Babcock Hole, which is County Road 388. For pre-evacuations in Custer County, we have northeastern Custer County to include a correction we do have that Greenwood Road and Bab uh, Babcock Hole. Uh, for the um, evacuation sites, for West Cliff evacuees, Valley Bible Fellowship, 116 Hermit Lane in Silver Cliff. For the Wetmore evacuees, they're to go to First Southern Baptist, Baptist Church at 305 East 3rd Street in Florence. For Custer County, the large and small animals can go to the Custer County Fairgrounds and Draper Ranch. For Pueblo, the evacuation sites, the evacuate, evacuees from Pueblo County can go to the Ag Palace at the Colorado State Fairgrounds. The facility at Craver Middle School is closed. Large animals can go to the Horse Arena at the Colorado State Fairgrounds at Gate 6. And small animals can go to Pueblo Animal Services, 4600 Eagle Ridge Place in Pueblo. And at this time, we're going to have Sheriff Shannon Byerly come up and speak. Uh, good afternoon. So I'm Shannon Byerly, B-Y-E-R-L-Y. Uh, -E -E. I'm the Custer County Sheriff. Uh, as I stated earlier the, today, uh, thanks for everybody coming and get, helping us get the word out. Uh, fire. We got a report of a fire about 3.40 uh, a.m. this morning. Uh, we had uh, initial fire personnel and some law enforcement respond. At that time, we determined with the high winds, uh, we needed an increased response, and uh, and as you can tell, the fire grew rapidly from there with uh, winds 
at 30 to 40 miles an hour with gusts to 70 miles an hour in the initial start zone. Uh, the fire grew rapidly. Uh, we immediately began evacuations of all the areas uh, mentioned earlier uh, by Don, uh, and we actively had been uh, evacuating all through the day. Uh, our last evacuations occurred about an hour ago. Uh, we're still monitoring the fire uh, and the activity, and we are just uh, anticipating that we may have uh, further uh, evacuations as the, uh, as the winds continue through the night and into tomorrow. Um, we would like to, uh, you know, our hearts would, go, uh, you know, just our thoughts and our hearts and our prayers go out to the folks that have been evacuated. Uh, their houses are at risk. Uh, the firefighters are out there. They're doing a really good job um, battling. Um, uh, right now, we have uh, at least four, or well, we, we have four confirmed structures that we've lost. I know that's something that you want to know. So we have one home that we did lose, and we have three additional structures. Uh, that we can confirm. Uh, we were trying to get a, a little bit more uh, firm numbers on those, but the fire activity kicked back up, and so uh, with the risk to fire personnel, we had to cease that uh, operability uh, to try to get in there. So right now we have four confirmed structures with one of one residence, um, and hopefully we'll get some better numbers through the night uh, when we get that opportunity. So right now that's all we have for those. Um, we would ask that uh, in all the evacuation areas for folks that are uh, uh, have been evacuated or if they've chosen to stay, um, that they stay in their homes uh, and they're not out on the roads. If we if we find them on the roads, we're going to escort them out of the evacuation area and they're not going to be allowed to return. It's critical for their safety and the safety of all the fire personnel and the law enforcement personnel that they stay in their residences. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, the primary focus on this fire still is life safety and life preservation. Extremely dangerous conditions. Uh, the firefighters are doing their very best, but they've got to take into account the winds. They are not uh, getting a lot better, and uh, so that's our big concern right now. So uh, those, are, those are the points I want to bring up. Uh, going to answer some qu any questions that come up after we let everyone speak, but uh, I'm going to uh, step aside. I'm going to let Sheriff Taylor uh, come up to the mic and, uh, and pass the word as well, okay? Good afternoon. Um, Kirk Taylor, K-I-R-K-T-A-Y-L-O-R. Um, just to... All right, that's the latest on the Junkins fire burning in Custer and now Pueblo counties. Uh, as you just heard, 156 properties under evacuation. Yeah, we believe the fire at this point has burned around 11,500 acres. A few structures have been have been lost, as the Custer County Sheriff mentioned moments ago. That includes at least one home and three other types of buildings. Also, 156 mandatory evacuations, but another 140 pre-evacuations, including the entire town of Beulah. Some deja vu for those folks mm -hmm. once again under pre-evacuation. Also, the Beulah School will be closed tomorrow because the smoke is simply so bad right now. We'll continue tracking the Junkins fire right here on the networks of KRDO. And only right here, we are getting a view of the Junkins fire from above. We are the only Southern Colorado station to get this specific view here. John Wark shot these photos this morning when the blaze broke out. Shortly thereafter, huge plumes of smoke could be seen for miles. You can see just how large of an area burning uh, there. And much of it is in wildland, in the mountains, and foothills. And we want to get to our team coverage now and continue that. Cardio News Channel 13 Scott Harrison is live at the Colorado State Fairgrounds in Pueblo. That's where an evacuation shelter is set up right now. Scott. Yeah, guys, we're here at the State Fairgrounds in Pueblo. We're at that evacuation center once again for the second time this month is set up for wildfire victims. So far, only four people have signed up to be here so far. You can see the cots are in place, some of them occupied, ready to be used tonight. Now, going through this once as an evacuee is bad enough, but when you have to go through it twice, that's really, it's really tough. And we met a family who, despite going through this for a second time, seemed to be in pretty good spirits. It was the Stalford family of Beulah. They live in the Beulah area. They said they woke up early this morning, saw the smoke, Minutes after that, got the evacuation order and got out, and they came here with their nine-year-old daughter, their dog and their cat and their two rabbits, not knowing, again, for the second time, 
what's going to happen. They're hoping they have a home to come back to, as many people are at this hour. We'll keep you updated on what's going on with the fire and the evacuees. Reporting live from the State Fairgrounds in Pueblo, Scott Harrison, KRDO News Channel 13. Yet again, and just two weeks after the Beulah Hill fire, many in the small town of Beulah are leaving their homes yet again. Again, it is under pre-evacuation notice. This time, the Junkins fire threatening their town. KRDO News Channel 13's Bonnie Silkman has been in Beulah all day speaking with people who say this time they're ready. Tensions are incredibly high close to downtown Beulah right now. A lot of people not taking any chances, packing up their things, loading up their trailers again, and getting out of harm's way. This is the view from close to downtown Beulah. You can see that smoke just pouring in, also planes overhead trying to assess the damage and the hot spots. Beulah Valley is in the danger zone right now. This fire here is about three times as big as the Beulah Hill fire. So that'll give you some, some indication of how large this fire is. It's zero percent, zero percent contained. Last time we were a little less prepared. We didn't know what to get. We just kind of grabbed some pictures and stuff that's irreplaceable. This time I'm, we're expecting to be gone quite a bit longer. And many people I spoke with today in Beulah said they haven't even unpacked from two weeks ago when the Beulah Hill fire first sparked. They said this feels like a nightmare. They cannot believe this is a reality. We're staying close to Beulah and keeping you updated for now reporting in Beulah. Bonnie Silkman for KRDO News Channel 13.